The Google name means so much more than search engines. The tech giant brings an almost Willy Wonka or Disney type of energy to any discussion. Attendees at the Ophthalmology Innovation Summit got a glimpse into the candy factory during an interesting discussion led by OAS co-chair Gil Kleiman. The discussion centered on the partnership between Google and Alcon to develop a contact lens that may someday measure glucose levels, treat presbyopia, and possibly even tell you if you've had one too many drinks to drive safely. Frank Lavillere, Vice President and Head of Research and Development at Alcon's Vision Care, says the partnership announced in June really brings together two leaders of their respective disciplines. We are really trying to leverage the complementarity between the two companies. At Alcon, we know how to make a biocompatible contact lens. We know how to uh, improve the comfort. We know how to design the lens. At Google, they know how to miniaturize technology. They know how to manage these wireless communications. So we have an extremely uh, fruitful collaboration because we really complement each other very well. Google's Brian Otis says the contact lens project reflects Google X's preference to swing for the fences. The company's other famous projects include the driverless car and balloons that can deliver internet access to remote places. Let's hear what Brian has to say about Google's take risk philosophy. We do want to take risks. We want to do things with a high, they have a very high impact, but we need to be responsible with the resources that we have. And so the, the philosophy that we have is try really hard things, but fail as quickly as possible. If an idea is going to fail, let's, let's make it fail as fast as we can. And you know, this, this Smart Contact Lens project, we've been trying desperately to make it fail for three years now. <laughs> and and it's, it's still running strong. So we're very excited about that. But that's a philosophy we take. This is one example. We're obviously looking at projects in other areas as well. And we apply the same brutal line of thinking. Um, we want to make it fail. And they do fail. And I think one of the key aspects of that is if you do come up with an idea, if you're diligent and honest about trying to make it fail, and it does fail, you're not, you're not penalized. You're expected to come up with the next great idea as, as fast as possible. As Gil Kleinman noted, it's rare to see such innovative leaps being taken by larger companies. Typically, these big ideas come from smaller, venture-backed startups. But an idea this big and this significant requires the expertise, and more important, the resources of two major companies. And even then, with those resources, Levelier says there's plenty to keep them up at night. So from the technical side, um, there are two things that keep me up at night. The first one is, of course, um, this is a medical device that is very uh, intrusive in the ocular surface. So we will need to ensure total biocompatibility of the material, of the surface, of the lens with the ocular surface. Uh, we don't want to create any mechanical insult, nor any chemical insult that could also um, generate production of tears, which could alter, for example, in the, in the case of the glucose sensing lens, the levels of glucose we will be sensing in the tear layer. The second thing that keeps me up at night is um, when you think, and this is device-independent risk, it is more the patient variability um, that can be created depending on the condition of the patient. For example, if he has an ocular allergy or if he's experimenting dry high, or also um, it could be coming from environmental factors like humidity, temperature, etc. So this is really what keeps us at, uh, up at night and what we are trying to do together with our Google friends is to address this risk up front. This clearly is an exciting partnership between the tech and medtech worlds. And Otis told OIS attendees he hopes it's only the beginning. I, did, I don't want to, to belabor this point too much, because um, I know we're, we're running out of time here. But something I would love all of you guys to think about, and there's a concept in the semiconductor industry of, of Morris Law. I don't know how many of you are, are familiar with that. But it is the observation that continues that the size of, of computer chips, their functionality, and um, their power consumption you know, will, will shrink by a factor of two every 18 months. So the, the device that's in the contact lens will shrink by a factor of two a year and a half from now, and that will continue going. There was a time when it wouldn't make sense to have this computer in a contact lens, but now it's possible. And if you extrapolate in the future, there are a lot of other applications on eye, in eye, that can use these types of technologies that are going to be becoming more and more powerful. So I'd love you to keep that in mind, and I'd love to get ideas from you where, where you think the next applications will be a few years down the line. Yeah.